Hey guys, Tom Trey Holmes here with the FujiNet Project, and I wanted to make a video showing how to take and make the experience with FujiNet and an Ultimate 1 Megabyte and Sparta DOS work even better by using a customized Sparta DOS X image which contains the FujiNet utilities. To start off with, we're actually going to take and make sure that a few things are set up correctly as needed. I am borrowing an Incognito 800 for a little while, and I decided to go ahead and flash it up to date and get Flash Jazz Cat's BIOS on here, everything up to the latest versions. And we're going to make sure that a few things are set up for us. First of all, that we're uh, it doesn't matter if we're in XLXE mode if we're, or in Colleen mode if we're on the Incognito. But uh, it is a nice thing to actually use some sort of XLEXE stock OS for the reasons you're going to see in just a moment. We're, of course, going to take and uh, enable Spart the Sparta DOS X here. And we're going to make sure that the PBI BIOS is enabled. And we want the PBI BIOS enabled so that we get access to the excellent high speed SIO routines on the next page. If we look at uh, the uh, P when PBI is enabled, we have access to the high-speed SIO driver. Make sure that this is selected. And for best effect, the FujiNet can actually apply high-speed SIO to all of its devices, so it's a good idea to have all selected here as well. Once this is done, uh, of course, I like to take and enable select for cold boot. We're done. Let's go ahead and save changes and cold boot. Now before we do that, I'm going to make sure absolutely that my FujiNet is completely cold reset. We tap the reset button, wait a few moments, and boot. Now because Sparta DOS X is sending active status messages to the FujiNet here. And because of changes that we've had to make in the last couple of weeks to make FujiNet interact better with existing devices, Sparta DOS X inadvertently shuts off the ROM disk here. So if you try to access Drive 1, as some, time, some have done in the past, you'll find that there's nothing there and the device will not respond. This is okay though. Because all we have to do is tap the FujiNet reset button again and issue a cold restart while also disabling the cartridge with slash n. We'll find ourselves inside the config program ready to mount any disk images. And in fact, if you wish to use config while also with Sparta DOS X, you can use cold slash n immediately after resetting the FujiNet to get access to the config program. We'll go ahead and go to Atari apps, go to the second page here and select ultimate 1MB FujiNet and uflash.atr. We'll mount it read only in drive one and we'll tap option to mount and boot. The boot will fail, but we'll be fine because we're actually gonna go back into the BIOS and do a cold start, which will re-enable Sparta DOS X. The boot, of course, fails. We tap back into the BIOS and then do a cold boot immediately back. And within a few moments, we'll find ourselves back at Sparta DOS X. But this time, because we've mounted a disk image ahead of time in drive one, particularly the disk image that contains our flashing utilities, we'll find that we have everything we need here to get everything done. We run uFlash, and within a few moments, we're presented with the uFlash screen here, along with our incognito or ultimate 1MB parameters. The only thing that we're really interested in at this particular point in time is to change Sparta DOS X. And in fact, if we actually hit the escape key, go back up into the menu, into options, we'll be able to take and set SDX size. 
for the type for the size of the ROM that we want to be able to put on. This disk image contains uh, all three of these ROM sizes. The differences primarily are in the amount of information that's provided on each. The 192 kilobyte version only provides the utilities, no manual pages, and the RS-232 utilities are also not present. This again was done through uh, issues of size. The 256K and 320K versions of SDX contain all of the utilities for FujiNet as well as their manual pages. The primary difference is, is that some people may want to take and customize the 320K image to add on additional utilities that they don't otherwise have. I'm using the 206K version. Make sure that that's okay. We already have it set, so I don't have to reset it again. So all I have to do to flash it is to select Sparta DOS X, select the ROM, in this case, the 206K version, and flash it to my device after it's been read in. This takes a few minutes. Once the file's been loaded in, it erases the flash and updates the flash slot. This takes a few minutes. And of course, once it's finished writing the data, it verifies it. Once this is done completely successfully, you get a message stating such and you're given the opportunity to reboot. Tap Escape, go to Device, and Reboot. And we'll see that we're in our recent build of Sparta DOS X. You'll see that the date is a tad bit newer the SDX Imager uh, program actually takes and updates the build dates here automatically. Kind of interesting, to say the least. But now we'll find that if we look on car, we'll see the usual suspects for Sparta DOS X and a whole bunch of new utilities for FujiNet. We can, for example, look at the current FujiNet configuration. We can query our host slots, query our device slots. We can see that we have our ultimate 1MB here. We can mount those device slots if they aren't already mounted. have access to them automatically. We can, of course, eject those device slots and put something else in its place. For example, we can make a new disk right here using the fnu command. Put it in drive one, we'll go ahead and put it in our SD card slot, which is host slot number one, and give it a type maximum size and call it SDS sticks ah, and call it SDS I can't say this and call it that the disk has been created and now we can format it build the directory And there we go. Voila. We also have access to all the networking utilities. For example, we can use NCD to change the network path for the end device. 
so that we don't have to keep typing long URLs over and over again. We can either do it here on the path like it's here, Oop. we can query to make sure what that prefix actually is, and now we can see what's over here on the network. The next thing we actually need to do is make a kernel device driver so that we can use the standard file system uh, routines, copy, etc., to be able to do these things without needing separate utilities. But until then, this should suffice just fine. For example, we can do this. We can copy a copy of Cyclod. over here to drive one. We can see it over here and we can run it, of course. There we go. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of what's actually possible. Now, of course, we go ahead. I'm just going to cold start this again. Come back into Sparta DOS X here too, because in addition to the FujiNet utilities, you also have the man pages for these utilities. For example, fnu. Or fmount. And so on. And of course, the APT utilities are here too, so you have FDisk. So if you have a hard disk such as an SID3 or the built-in bits and pieces for a uh, the built-in bits and pieces for an incognito, you can use them here as well. Looks like I just need to turn them on. Let's go ahead and do that. One moment. And go ahead and just do that. Bring it all back together here. And within a few moments. We run F disk. Boom. There's my card. And there's a file system. I can just as easily take and mount that here on any of these device slots here, or I can move it out of the way, for example, onto drive nine here. We'll go ahead and do that. Exit, write the changes. And we'll see that our hard drive partitions are right here, going alongside our FujiNet ones just as easily. Nice and seamless, it's all fine. So with that, I'll go ahead and leave this here, but I wanted to kind of show where things are. Can we improve it? Yes, but we'll need your help to do it. So if you're interested in making this better, please contact us and let us know, see what we can do to make this better. So until next time, guys, have fun. <laughs>